the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's praise Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Would you stand together in this house tonight? Oh, it's good to be together on, on not so cold a night. Uh, the Lord warms our hearts and being with one another warms our spirits. Amen. Amen. How pleasant it is for all the brothers and sisters to be together in unity. Lord, we thank you tonight that we can praise you. We just want to thank you for this prayer meeting night and for this Bible study night. We thank you that you are on the throne, that you are God. You're God alone. We thank you, O oh Lord, uh, that we can lift our voices tonight, that we can be together. We thank you that you're, you are in charge of our lives. You're the Lord, and you're worthy of our praise. You are worthy tonight of our praise. Let's bless the Lord. Amen.
Hallelujah. His name is worthy. Amen. Yes. Can you just say it? Can you just say Jesus with me? Say it with me. Just say Jesus. Jesus. You know, sometimes I just I say God. I do. I, I love to talk to God. But I'm telling you, when I say Jesus, yes. there's just something about that name that when I say it, no matter what's happening around me or in front of me, it changes. His name has the ability to change my situation and to change my circumstances. And just saying it, I, I want his name to be like my, I, don't, I want it to be my first nature that when I, I just want to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, when my mama used to pray, that's what she would do. I, I couldn't hear her in the other room, but I could always hear Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I love to get alone in the presence of the Lord and just be still before him. And sometimes that's hard, isn't it? But I want us to just take a few minutes right now, if you would. Let's just kind of just come and be still before him. Amen. Hide me now under
you glad when it seems like everything around the world is in such chaos, you can find a quiet place to be alone with the Lord and He stills the storm, amen. And He can calm our hearts and our minds. I love what the psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted over all the earth. Sometimes when I read that, I, I say to myself, and Lord, I know you'll be exalted over my problems, <laughs> over my worrying heart, over my stress and my anxiety, over all of my fears. Am I alone? I get that way sometimes. When I, when I lift up the name of Jesus, Sister Debbie, that name of Jesus, there's no other name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ooh, sometimes you just don't want to move on. There it is. You just want to kind of stay right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, you may be seated in the house of the Lord tonight. Worship team, y'all do a wonderful job. Awesome. Wow. Welcome, everyone, to the house of the Lord tonight. Looks like we have all home. Any first time guests? Looks like we have all home folks tonight again. Praise the Lord. Good to have all of you out tonight. And in the house of the Lord, to come and worship Him and to come here, Pastor John, bring the word. Does anybody remember the questions from last week? <laughs> We're going to be quizzed, aren't we, Pastor John? <laughs> so praise the Lord for that. By way of announcements, before our ushers come to receive God's tithes and offerings, uh, remember this Friday at uh, 11 a.m. in the chapel. The Golden Harvesters will be meeting, and Dahlia Taylor will be bringing, uh, speaking on the heart of God, the heart of the harvest. Don't forget to bring a covered dish, and also bring a friend with you if you can. And then this Sunday after service, if you would like to be a part of the choir, we're going to have a meeting for the uh, regular choir, all, or, or if you would like to be a part of the choir for uh, Easter coming up. Believe it or not, Easter is just over two months away. And uh, I think it's the first Sunday in April, if I'm not mistaken. Am I right on that? I think. Some, uh, April yeah. 1st. Pardon me? April 1st. April 1st this year. So, yeah. So, we got, it's going to be here before we know it. We'll be celebrating the Resurrection Day. Amen? And uh, church-wide prayer would I be this Sunday night. As you know, we normally have it every uh, first Sunday of the month. But this Sunday, it will be uh, postponed to next Sunday at 6 p.m. So mark your calendars for church-wide prayer next Sunday at 6 p.m. And as our ushers come forward tonight to receive God's tithes and our offerings, let's give thanks to him for his wonderful gifts. Amen. Praise the Lord. And our scripture verse tonight comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, so let each one give as, gives as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Father, we are so thankful tonight that we can give with a cheerful heart, with a thankful heart, Father God, and with a joyful heart, Father, for you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And as we give unto you this evening of your tithes and our offerings, we pray that you bless it and use it for the furthering of the kingdom, not only here in the cantonment and here at Harvest Christian Church, but throughout the world, through our missionaries, Father God, and throughout the sending of the messages, throughout the internet ways, Father, through the YouTube videos, may your name be glorified and exalted in the name of Jesus, for whom we give the praise and glory to. And all of God's people said, amen, amen and amen. As the ushers come, stand with us and sing with the worship team as they sing, How Good It Is. Amen. Oh, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How great it is to sing about His name. How good it is to sing praises to our God. Come on, people, just praise His holy name. How good it is. Oh, how good it is to sing praises to our God. How great it is to sing about His name. How good it is to sing praises to our God. Holy name. 
Man, why don't you, uh, while you're up, go ahead and uh, greet at least three people before you sit down and let them know the Lord loves you tonight. Amen. 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 I greet you all in the na strong name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many know he's worthy tonight? Amen. I've been praying for his presence to be here all day and uh, dwell with us and move among us tonight. Before we get started, let us, let us pray and before we start our Bible study tonight. Father, we, Lord, we just pray tonight this this place will be your dwelling place. Lord, that you would dwell among us. Use each and every one of us tonight to draw the word out that you want us to hear tonight. Lord, we come in expectation of hearing your word and being strengthened, Lord, and renewed in our spirit. Lord, we thank you for keeping us all today long. We thank you for those that went home from the hospital. We thank you for those that's been healed we thank you for those that's been joy, been restored. And Lord, we pray that you open every heart to be receptive to your word and every ear. And let everyone here to be willing to be used by you. And tonight, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 We, we thank God for all the good reports I uh, heard this week. Miss Debbie, I heard you, your daughter went home from the hospital. Is that true? Praise God for that. And uh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thought it was uh, worse than it was, but God, prayer changes things. Amen. Amen. I heard from uh, Mike Kelly on yesterday, and he, uh, he was very, sound very excited. He had been down earlier this week with, a, I think, a fever, but he feels a whole lot better. Amen. Looking forward to fellowship. He had company. I was going to come over and visit with him, but he already had company. But we just... Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Um, I pray that y'all been fighting a good fight of faith today and and victory is on your side. Uh, tonight, we're going to continue on our Bible study we started on last week. Anybody that wasn't here on last week, on last Wednesday, amen. We, we're going to do a little review then. Amen. We, we uh, started a, a, a teaching on regaining your edge, regaining your edge, regaining your spiritual fire for the Lord, re regaining the sensitivity to the Spirit. And, and that's where... That the power of the Holy Ghost, that is what gives us the advantage as Christians. And we're going gonna to go over some things. I, I told you it was some questions I was going to present tonight. And I'm going to do that. And just like I did last week, this lesson will be facilitated. That means taught by most of you. Last week, I think I did most of the talking myself. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to change it around this week. And like I said, I, I've been living for the Lord probably about 24 years myself and tonight I believe we have over 500 years of people living for the Lord that has experiences 
that God has used uh, and, uh, and it gave them victory. And sometimes they did make wrong decisions and it caused them to be hindered or lose their edge. And we want to hear from you tonight because we want to be, we want to, uh, we want to learn from other people's mistakes. Amen. We want, to, we want to go forward for the Lord and make less mistakes as possible. Lord, grace is sufficient, though. So we are, uh, I want to encourage you. I did mention last week about shotgun and questions. That's when I says, uh, Beth, what do you think about this? <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to encourage you to give your input. And I've been praying that God would draw what he has for us out of all of us tonight. Amen. Uh, my, our scripture, well, our, our topic again is regaining our edge. Regaining your edge. Uh, got a, I got something with me tonight. I'm thinking, should I do this or not? I'm going to go out on a limb tonight. Amen. I got my work light with me. Let me put on my work light. Yeah. I like that. Is, that. is that bright? Amen. This is, this is my work light. I'm going to cut it down some. Amen. This is my work light. This is what I use around the house working on my cars, working on my daughter's cars most of the time because all of them had like two or three wrecks. Uh, I work on some plumbing up under the sink with my work light. Also, uh, I do a little electrical work. And when I cut off all the power in the house, I get my work light out and I, 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 and I use my work light to do work. And I, I use it also, I use it to clean my daughter's ears. <laughs> Can you imagine? I know, I, I know. But I started doing this when I was, when they was very young, and I still have 14 and 15-year-old daughters come in my room like, Dad, could you clean my ears? And I break out my work light. And I, and, and I eat clean ears, and uh, I don't know, it's just something I have did the whole childhood. And uh, so after about two weeks of working with this light, this light starts to get dim, and it it, it it don't as it don't be as bright as it is now. It gets dimmer and dimmer as I work with it. And if I'm not careful, I get ready to do some work, and my light is totally out. All the power is gone. And if I don't, if I'm working on something, I don't want to take time out to charge my light because it's you you plug it in and you charge it. I will continue to do work and not be able to see what I'm doing. A lot of times, the work I do, it takes longer for me to do it when my light is not shining. Not only it takes longer, I make more mistakes. And a lot of times, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working in, the, in a dark area, and I don't put plate uh, pieces right where they're supposed to be. Sometimes I've I've been working and then not having my light charged, and I've cross-threaded some bolts, and I messed something up, and it was in worse shape after I would try to fix it without my light. And all it needed for me to take some time out and recharge it. And this is, a, this is my charging cord, and if I just take time out to recharge my light, I can get back out there and be more effective in the work I'm trying to do. And it takes less time, and I, and I don't have to work as hard, and I less, make less mistakes. And a lot of times as Christians, we get busy doing our work. And, 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 and our light for the Lord starts getting dimmer and dimmer. And we got so much work on our plate, we, don't, we figure we don't have time to stop and charge, recharge ourselves or uh, re, re, uh, re-sharpen our blade. Um, well, we, we te- we're talking about uh, regaining our edge or recharging our spirit. And so I want to, if you couldn't get the analogy about the blade, I hope you get the analogy about the light. We have to take time out to get recharged 
and recharge for the Lord to be effective in the work that God wants us to do. And us being as, as harvest serving churches, serving the people, we can not only serve the people, but we can give them a word from the Lord. When you're in tune with the Lord, God can give you a word on that, whoever you're serving on that person's circumstance that will change their direction in life. God can use his spirit as we're serving to accomplish his purpose. Amen. So I want to, uh, that, that's, that's about my, my work. Like I, I use my work like for other things. And I know y'all think y'all know Pastor John, but y'all don't know Pastor John. Amen. I, my, I get on my wife's nerves because I like the bus bumps too. <laughs> I, I, growing up, I thought I was going to be a bump doctor. And uh, I just like to see the infection leave anything. And so uh, I want to, for you, it's very important to stay charged up. It's very important to uh, stay sharpened for the Lord. Ecclesiastes 10.10 10 says, If the axe is dull and the edge is unsharp, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. Skill means the wisdom. And the New Living Translation says, Using a dull axe requires more strength, so sharpen the blade that the value of wisdom, it helps you succeed. Amen. Staying sharp and staying close to the Lord and being in tune with God, it gives us wisdom. And I said it last week, wisdom is putting a man in the right way of doing things and doing them right. It directs the best methods of doing something and pursue the best ways of doing something that helps you and the person you're trying to help. I got a, a story about a, a young man that was trying to do God's work in 2 Kings. You have to skip a slide. Uh, 2 Kings 6, uh, 1. 2 Kings 6, 1 through 6. It's a story about a, a young man that was on fire for the God and the ministry was growing and they was trying to do some work for the Lord. The scripture reads that the company of prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go into the Jordan where each of us can get a pole and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, Go. And one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha said. And he went with them and went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. And as one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell in the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried. It was borrowed. The man, asked, the man, the man of God asked, where did it fall? And, he, and when he showed him the place, Elijah took a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Amen. This is a young man full of zeal. He was a, the company of the prophets is a bunch of young men that Elisha was teaching in a, a school of prophecy. It had got too small for the, all the students there, and so the young men came together and to expand the ministry. So they had an idea to go down by the River Jordan and cut all of them, cut poles and make a, a bigger, uh, bigger place to meet for the school of prophecy. But this young man, he was out trying to do the work of the ministry and his ax head flew off the handle as he was cutting down a tree. The ax head represent the effectiveness to do God's work. The ax head represents the power of God in his life and he wanted to do God's work he wanted to do the work of God, but he lost his effectiveness. He, and and, and he, he was cutting on a tree, and the axe head flew off. He could have did like many of us in the church. After they lost his edge, his cutting edge, his effectiveness, he could have just kept going through the motions. But I can imagine if he continued to go through the motions, everybody else out there that's cutting, 
their trees will be falling. But his wouldn't fall. And a lot of times when we're in the church or working in ministry and we lose our cutting edge, we lose our focus, we lose our fire for God, we're continually working, but nothing is happening. Nobody's getting delivered. Nobody's been getting set free. Nobody's getting saved. And what this young man did when he lost his cutting edge, his effectiveness, it was a big deal to him. He cried out. He's like, oh, no, I lost it. it. And it was borrowed. So it was a big deal for this young man to lose his cutting edge, his effectiveness to do work. And it should be a big deal for us if we know in ourselves we've lost our fire for the Lord. And we're not in tune with the Spirit. It should be a big deal for us. And we should stop what we're doing and get recharged and stop what we're doing and get sharpened and get back in tune with the Lord because you can continue, continue to work and nothing happens. Nothing falls. You get discouraged. And the enemy will use that and you will leave the church. And then all it is, you've lost your fire for the Lord. You lost your effectiveness in ministry. And uh, we talked about one of the things I, I notice in, in verse 6, say the man of God asked, asked the young man, where did it fall? Where did you lose it? And we start talking about last, uh, talking about that last Wednesday. Uh, I asked the question, who have lost their cutting edge or their fire for the Lord? And many of you raised your hands. And then I asked the question, can anybody tell me how that they lose their cutting edge? What made them lose their fire? Because a lot of people lose their fire for the Lord, and they don't know where they lost it. And if you don't know where you lost it or how you lost it, you can lose it the same way again and again. And every time you get fire for the Lord, that same situation comes up, and you lose your fire again and again. And the so the man of God asked him, where did you lose it? Point to the place you lost it. And then the man of God threw a stick in the water and the iron floated. And so we, had, we talked last week about where, where did some of you lose your cutting edge or how did some of you lose your cutting edge. And uh, I remember that a lot of the responses. Uh, I think Pastor Fred said, through service, through burnout. You can continue to serve and continue to serve and don't do any maintenance, don't do any sharpening, don't do any recharging, and you can use, lose your effectiveness. You can you get so busy, you can lose being effective in the kingdom of God. And I heard someone said they lost their fire or their cutting edge when they stepped out in faith, and it didn't. It didn't turn out the way they thought it would turn out. If you serve in the Lord, if you fail, you fail, you fall forward, you fall closer to God. And if you're not making mistakes, that means you're not trying. Amen. And the only people that don't make mistakes are the, the cowards that's too scared to try. So if you fall or it don't turn out the way you want it, get up, thank the Lord for the opportunity, and, and try again, because the enemy is going to be in your ear to discourage you. And see, see what happened? If you never stepped out, this would have never happened to you. He'll be in your ear continually trying to discourage you. That's a, a trick of the enemy, enemy to try to discourage you, to get you to walk away from what God called for you to do. And one of the things that I've I heard last week that was very, very interesting. Someone said they lost their fire for the Lord. They lost their effectiveness to do God's work when they was corrected in the church. That is very common. That is very common in our churches. Someone gets corrected or, or someone do some type of correction and they lose their fire and their zeal for the Lord. The Bible says that despise not the chastising of the Lord. It's, he chastises us because he loves us and he treats us like sons and daughters. And I want to pose that question some more. Anyone else want to 
want to uh, share how if they lost their fire for the Lord, how did they lose it? And what, what happened, what transpired to get them to lose their fire for the Lord and get, get out of tune with the Lord? Anyone would share. I told you about shotgunning, right? Anyone would like to share? Skipping church. Amen. Skipping. <laughs> Been there. Been there. Done that. I, I, you know, when you skip church and you don't have a good excuse, the enemy will say, don't go back because they're going to ask you. You don't want to lie. You don't even, you say, matter of fact, you don't even have to deal with that anymore. Don't even go back. And, and a lot of times you skip church and you lose your fire. And, and the enemy will be in your ear about they're going to ask you why you was gone. gone. And a lot of times you don't have a good reason. You're just dealing with things. Yeah, the cooler, the further away from the fire you walk, the cooler you get. And at some point, you'll go beyond being cool. You'll be cold and ineffective for the Lord. Amen. And that goes on to lukewarmness. And you know what the Lord says about lukewarmness. Any else, anybody else want to share before we, before we go on? Mine kind of ties in with what he, he was just mentioning. Um, it can be found in uh, Philippians. Um, Paul said, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Um, I had my own ideas of what my ministry was going to be about in the past. And um, it didn't line up with God's, and I ended up crashing and burning. And, and once I uh, got back on track with what he had planned for my life, everything started just getting right again. Amen. Amen. Getting back in line. <clears throat> I remember as a, as a young Christian, <clears throat> I would choose people above God. Not doing it on purpose, but just not having that strong relationship. And so when our church split, and this was in Illinois when I was single, and our pastor was had to leave, it just kind of devastated me because, but now that I look back on it now in my walk, it was like I was dependent on a man instead of God or if you have friends and you're on fire for a church and stuff and you have to sometimes you have to choose to walk away from the people in your life and choose God but sometimes that's hard as a young Christian especially when you're single so sometimes we, I, I would put people above God amen putting people above the Lord one of the things I had written down one of the one of the major reasons people get dull I get discouraged. Uh, people in the church might look up to a leader, and a leader leaves, and they start waffling, thinking, and not being committed to what God has them to do. God is not dead. His ministry goes on. So that's a good point. Putting other people in a pedestals, you know, trying to please man pleases rather to please man than please God and a lot of times you know pleasing God is not popular a lot of times standing you have to stand by yourself and you got to be willing to stand by yourself amen anyone else uh, as a young Christian I, my husband worked out of town a lot and I was thrown with a, a co-worker's wife and she was not a Christian and I was a very young Christian and young and foolish. And I thought I could, you know, hang around with her and, and not lose all that. But she influenced me a lot more than I did her because I was young in the Lord and I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. Amen. Being unequally yoked in friendship. And I think that's a big need in uh, the women's ministry and the men's ministry in the church especially in the men's because we have young men young men getting ready to get married young men that just got married they're going through marital problems they're going through problems with young children 
And if we as men don't make ourselves available to talk to them, to counsel them through it, to refocus their focus, they're going to go to work and talk to somebody that's not saved. And you're going to get some bad advice. And you're going to get, this is what I do. Come on, brother, after work, come drink a beer with me. I'll tell you what to do. And as, as Christians, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. And we as men and women in the church, we need to make ourselves available. Especially, you know, I, I've been in the military, was in the military 26 years. And that was a big thing with my wife. Other women made themselves available to encourage her to speak into her life. To, when she didn't feel like being encouraged, being there to encourage her and get them through. Amen. Being there as a sounding board. Any other, any other comments? I know, I thought I was very, very on fire for the Lord. I, I, you know, I was fasting. I was doing all kind of things. And all it took is one young lady laugh at me. Uh, just one. And a lot of the time, you don't know what the enemy had. You know, he, a lot of times, the enemy have some input in that. The enemy would, if you don't belong to the Lord, the enemy, your, your, your mind is like a fence without a, uh, a city without a wall. And people that's unsaved, the enemy can speak to them to get to you, to get you off focus or get you off track and uh, or push your buttons. And if you don't know where you fell off, you don't know where you lost your edge, the enemy is going to use a person or a person like that to keep you losing your edge. Every time you get on fire for the Lord, every time you start going forward, the enemy is going to come to a friend around you and, 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 and uh, put something in their ear to offend you. And then all of a sudden, the cycle starts over again. So it's important for us to know where we lost our edge, to know why we, where we fell off the wagon at, and, and be on guard for that. Our next question. When you lost your edge, when you lost your fire for God, what are some of the characteristics of behavior you display? I know nobody don't want to share this. <laughs> What's that? Stop. Amen. Stop praying. A lot of times I would m migrate to the back of the church or hang out in the lobby. You know, not, not saying anything back then, you know, but you know when I'm when I was on fire, when I'm on fire for the Lord, when I'm, you know, I'm praying on fire for the Lord, I try to get close as I can to the fire. I come right there up front, and I, I'll be ready to receive from the Lord. I'll be uh, uh, expecting God to give me something, expecting a word from the Lord. Anybody else want to share? Okay. Stop, stop praying. Amen. That. <laughs> Stop reading your Bible. Amen. Let's go hands in hands. Stop praying. Start reading your Bible. Start getting busy. I was more critical and judgmental. Mm. Of others? Yes. Or of yourself? Others. Amen. Amen. Excuses, excuses, excuses. When God would convict you, you'd have an excuse. <laughs> excuses <laughs> and more critical. Mm. Man. And then you could point out the wrongs in others and that justify you don't have to line up up under. I know a lot of people they if they can point out something wrong with the leader, they don't think they have to line up up under the leader. They're following the leader, not the God. Amen. Well, I wanna go back to when I lost my age, just like we said, um, I was on fire for God and had just started going to a church up in uh, Red Level uh, or South Alabama. And uh, I was helping teaching the, the little kids. And for like five or six years, I was all involved with the kids. And it was a small group and they kept growing and growing. We did a lot of fundraisers. We went everywhere. And when I did anything, it wasn't just for the middle school. Uh, you know, kids I had, the whole church was invited. When we went somewhere, anybody wanting to go could go. And this had been going on, and it, like I said, it just kept growing. But then we ha we went through like six pastors in the ten eight years I was there. But one of the pastors, after a while, he 
we were going to like uh, Tennessee up to uh, Oktoberfest or whatever one of those and he said no little kids could go and he said except for my kid and I and when you were talking about correction I corrected him I said what well, if this kid can go why can't these other little kids that are older than him go and he got mad and I said he ended up within the next couple of weeks he appointed some other people to be a youth pastor and his wife because they had to be married and then you know and my husband at the time was not involved in the church and I said so he kept pushing me out of you know out of the way and you know had somebody else all the time and whenever he left he got in contact with a new preacher and told him stuff and then he wanted to change the way we we talk and the kids just it started falling off the kids didn't do anything and you know I said and it I lost my zeal for wanting to do that but I said but it came back you know later uh, to be a, a greeter and like I was the candy lady instead of the candy man <laughs> And, you know, and I enjoyed that because I enjoyed meeting people and stuff. But I had to find something else to do because I was, I was so hurt because, you know, he took the desire that God had gave me to take care of these kids and teach these kids, and he took that desire from me. Amen. Church hurt. That's some powerful stuff, church hurt. One thing that I, I learned that could heal church hurt is fasting and praying. Fasting and praying is one of the quickest ways to che to, uh, to heal church hurt, to forgive those that done you wrong, and to get more like the Lord. As you focus on God and focus on yourself and try to be more like the Lord, you can find it in your heart to forgive them. You can find it in your heart to move on and focus on Him. And, uh, I think I skipped one, but I want to. I only have about ten minutes left. But fasting. Why is it so hard for Christians to fast? Yeah. They like to eat. <laughs> they like to eat. Anybody else? Yes. A lot of people say it's not, they think in their mind it's not, it's not that serious for me to fast. And a lot of times when it get that serious, they're ready to give up instead of fast. Anybody, any, anything else? Why is it so hard for Christians, ourselves, to commit to a fast? Lack of discipline. Amen. Lack of discipline. And I was... If certain things can get done in the church in their spiritual walk without fasting. And there's some things it's going to take fasting. And when I was, one thing, one of the examples in the Bible is the, the young man that uh, the, they had it, the demon cast out of him. The Bible said that Jesus said that this kind only comes through fasting and prayer. Now, in my mind, if you can't defeat hunger pains a day or two days, how are you going to defeat a demon that you're dealing with? And when we fast, our mind, we, we how I can how I describe, how I can picture it is the Lord is an infinite gallon tank of water, like the big water tank over there. And we need to be filled. And, when, and we have a hose or a pipe that goes to us. And we're not in tune with God or we're not, we're not sharp that pipe is full of gunk. It's full of, of all kind of stuff. So we, have, we get the spirit, but we get it in limited amounts. And when we fast, we clean out all the gunk out of that pipe. And the spirit of God can flow freely. And it, and it flows freely where we can receive a word from God. We can think clearer. 
We can forgive faster. We can be in tune with God. And we're most sensitive to not only his spirit or demonic spirits that's around us or come around us. And <laughs> I, uh, one of the guys I brought to church with me a couple weeks ago, his name is Mr. Walker. Uh, and I, I know many of you see him walking. He's an 88-year-old man that lives about a, a mile away from me. And he walks all the time. And his name is Mr. Walker. And I, and I go over to help him from time to time. And on, in August or September, they went to Fiber Optics uh, Network for, for TV in his neighborhood. And he couldn't get TV. He couldn't get channels. So I went over to set him up a new TV and program the remote. It was September or August. It was about 105 degrees. And I went over to Mr. Walker house. He lived in a cinder block house. And it was about 105 degrees in the house. And I was trying to use my phone to program this remote. And it, I was sweating and my glasses was fogging up. I couldn't, I couldn't read my phone and program. And I glanced over. I, I looked up and I glanced over and I saw uh, air condition in the window. Brand new air condition. The plug of the air condition was still wrapped up in plastic. I said, Mr. Walker, why you won't use your air condition? You know, Mr. Walker said, it draws too much juice. I said, but it's 105 degrees. He said, I'm not willing to pay for the power. And as Christians, we want the power of the Holy Spirit. We want it working in our life. We want to we wanna operate in it. We, we want to do great things for God, but we're not willing to pay for the power. And how we pay for the power is spending time with God, pushing away the plate, focusing on him, uh, and, and receiving the power from the Lord. Me, myself, I, I like even my... <laughs> Even my fasting, I like to tithe. Uh, at least three three days a month. If you do three days a month, 12 months a year, that's 36 days. That's one about one-tenth of the year. But if we want the power from God, we're going to have to pay the price. We're going to have to say no to our flesh and yes to God. We're going to have to get serious about God. You know, we got, we got to say, Lord, it's more important for me to be used by you to these hunger pains here. I, 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 I totally understand about uh, people on medication, and you can't fast. But I, the Bible says when you fast. And if we want to get serious about doing things from God and being effective in this area, we're going to have to fast and pray that God will power us up and we can, we can uh, be effective in ministry. And like I said, uh, when I, I, mean, I, got, I got a couple benefits of fasting. Benefits of fasting. It'll help you give up bad habits. It'll help you keep you, establish some self-control. Myself and it helped me with my it has helped me with my spending and it helped me with my 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 mouth and controlling my anger. Fasting help you in worship, help to be more intimate with the Lord. You've been thinking about Him all day long. And the time you usually eat, you're spending time with Him. And it helps you in worship. It helps you with the peace of mind. It gives you emotional strength through trials and emotional strength when you're having anxieties. It helps you mem memorize things also when your your mind is not so cluttered. It also helps you to unplug from all the electronic devices and social media that you can focus on others. You can focus on praying for others and interceding for others. Also help you with your physical strength. 
when you're f praying and fasting, you're not eating food, you're drinking water, you're flushing the toxins out of your body. Helps you with your devotion. Helps you think about others. Helps you add years to your life. Help your lower risk of diabetes. Helps you with absorbing the word and hearing for God. The Bible says prayer and fasting. So you pray, you fast, and you meditate on God. Meditate, praying is you speaking. Meditating is you listening, hearing from him. And a majority of the time when we're fasting, we're listening, we're meditating. And can God can give you some clear directions when you're meditating on him. It helps you with self-control all areas of the life and it helps you lower risk of disease and it helps you be sensitive to the spirit. One of the things it really helps me, it helps me to know when demonic spirits are trying to operate in my household or demonic spirits are around me. You're sensitive to the Holy Spirit and you're sensitive to other spirits also. There's so many benefits to fasting. So I want to encourage you, continue on fasting. We, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to uh, ask you to fast on Wednesdays to after service and on Sunday to after service. But I want you to be aware of these benefits. God has given us this plan of fasting, and it would help us be healthy. It would help us be healthy in our bodies, healthy spiritually, and healthy naturally. We're just going to have to make that a priority and, instead of making ourselves a priority. Jeremiah 51 said that we are God's battle axe. God's going to uh, accomplish some things through us. Through us being his battle axe, being his warrior for him. And it's a whole lot easier to be God's battle axe when we're led by the Spirit. And it says, you are my battle axe and sword, saith the Lord. With you I will shatter nations and destroy many kingdoms. With you I will shatter armies and destroy the horse horse and the rider and the chariots and the charioteer amen lord is ready to use us are you willing to pay the cost to be used by god how high is that on your priority this is all i have for the night do we have any uh, prayer requests before we finish up? Amen. Pastor Fred, do you have anything? past eight I want to go ahead and finish up in prayer I want to get the children home at a decent time tonight let us pray father what we thank you for your word tonight we thank you for the plan you place in your word for us to be strong and very courageous that we may be recharge and sharpen that we may be a tool that you may use against the enemy in this day and time lord we pray that you continue to sharpen us continue to allow us to fight a good fight of faith lord let this word stir in us that we may make it a priority to be used by you make it a priority to be empowered by you 
that we would desire that more than anything else. And Lord, we ask you right now for those that are suffering with sickness and the, the Gillen family and the others that has been suffering with sickness, cold, flu, pneumonia. Lord, we pray right now for healing. Lord, we pray for those that had lost loved ones because of the sickness. We pray for comfort. Lord, we pray that you send someone that's filled with your spirit. That have heard a word from you that will, that will cause healing to take place for those families. Lord, we ask you right now to open our understanding, open our ears, open our capacity to be filled with more of you. That we may focus on you and focus on the work that you would have us to do. Lord, we pray that you send your word to the man that you have for this house, the pastor, the leader that you have for this house in this day and this time. Send the word to him. Confirm it by three or four others in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we fast and pray, Lord, we ask you to open our understanding, Lord, for things that we pondered. Give us dreams and visions that we hadn't had, that we may go hard towards you, Lord, and accomplish your purpose. Lord, we thank you for all you did and all you will do and all you're going to do. And, Lord, we pray that the Spirit of God rest on us as we leave this place. In Jesus' name. Amen.